Hey, it's Jeff Sauer here, and in this video, we are going to take you behind the scenes in our operation here at Jeffalytics. And specifically, I want to talk about our product selection process. What do we go through in order to select a product that we choose to build here at Jeffalytics, whether it's an online course, a supplemental product, or something else that we do in the business? And this is a beta process because I'm still perfecting it, but it's the process we've used in order to get people interested in our courses in the past. It's the process we've used in order to determine if we build something, will people actually buy it? And it's the process that I think has really started to work for me. And not only that, but I'm looking to formalize it into our official process. And this is a great time for me to reveal the process and see what you think about it. So I'm interested in learning what you think about our process for selecting and creating products. And if you thought this was pretty cool or you have some questions about the process for yourself, make sure you follow along and leave a comment on the blog post. Let's go behind the scenes of our product selection process. In previous behind the scenes videos, we specifically talked about the 90 day challenge, the challenges that we put our team through in order to deliver on time, our editing, our production process, everything we did for the 90 day challenge. And I think we did a good job of covering what we do and the 90 day challenge is running smoothly. So for the remaining behind the scenes videos of our 90 day challenge, I'm gonna switch gears and I'm gonna talk to you about our products. The products we have here at Jeffalytics how we choose them, and just some cool stories about how we got this whole part of the business off the ground. Now, I have been a full-time digital marketer since 2005. And even before then, I was an internet creator, and that's all that I've been doing pretty much my entire young adult and adult life is creating things on the internet. And while I've had a very nice career as a consultant and an agency owner, I felt that something was missing. I wanted to create a product of my own. I had been marketing products for other people for over a decade. I enjoyed it, but I started to think, man, what if I could do my own product? What would happen? How would it feel? I think I would be more fulfilled. And so I started down that path in 2013. Now here's the hard lesson that I learned along the way. Here's the part that's crazy that people don't tell you. I didn't make my first $1,000 off products until 2015. Started in 2013, spent over a year and I didn't make my first $1,000 until 2015. Oops. I persisted, and in 2016 alone, my products reached six figures in revenue, and that felt great, that was amazing. And even better, our products brought in over $100,000 in revenue in one week in 2017. So things have taken off, things are going well, the business is looking good, and we've successfully transitioned to becoming a product company here at Jeffalytics. Now, it's easy for me to talk about the good things and say, yes, everything's good, but actually it took a long time to get traction. So for the rest of this video, I wanna talk about how we got traction in the first place, how we went from a year plus struggling to make $1,000 to $100,000 in one week. Now that could be the subject of a full book. So I wanna narrow down the scope for today's video and I wanna talk about how I develop new product ideas. So let's set the tone again. After 12 plus months of experimenting with products, I had less than $1,000 in sales. In desperation, it led me to a new idea. Instead of assuming that I knew what my audience wanted, why don't I just ask them what they would pay me for? So I took all my product ideas and I wrote an email and I sent it out to my list, which was about 1,000 people at the time. The subject line was, what do you want to learn? Tell me and I'll develop a program for you for just $1. And here's the full email. Basically, I was getting to know my list. What are you interested in? What are your motivations? I set the tone for what their response means to me. Basically, if they vote for a $1 course and it's selected, I will give them a cart link to buy it for $1, which if you know anything about buying things online, buying something for $1, I actually pretty much break even on the transaction because of credit card fees, but it was their incentive for responding to the survey. Notice that I sent this email on December 31st, 2014, right in the morning. Basically, it was my, oh crap, I haven't done anything at all in 2014. I need to start 2015, right? I'm going to send out the survey email. And I told them that if I selected their course, I would be delivering it to them on February 1, which is just one month after I sent this email out. I put the pressure on myself to say, if people are paying me for this, that I need to deliver. And I need to deliver it on time. And to round out the email, I shared my top seven course ideas. One was a Google AdWords course. One was a freelancer course. One was a complete digital advertising course. One was a digital measurement course, basically a complete digital measurement course. One was how to run an agency, how to build an agency. 
which might sound familiar to you. One about tactical marketing, just only on the tactics of marketing, not so much on the strategies. Finally, one that was just digital marketing strategy, not on the tactics. And these things might not be completely differentiated, but it was my idea at that time. And just for some context, most of the people on my list at this point were previous students who I had taught in person at either a university or a trade school on things like digital marketing strategy, Google Analytics, all kinds of different things that I talked about. And so this was preceded to a group of people who had already been my students and was really looking to know what they wanted to learn next. And finally, I gave them the option to just write in whatever course they wanted to do, knowing that the write-ins probably wouldn't be a subject of a course that I would create. And thankfully for me, the responses started rolling in. Well, at least rolling in for the size of my list at that point in time. This one wanted to know AdWords and how to freelance. We had one that said, I want to know AdWords. And then they said, in addition to AdWords, I'd like to know how to read HTML code. Okay, that's cool, but I'm not sure I could do a course on it. Another one, AdWords, as well as the Complete Digital Advertising Strategy course. This one, AdWords plus Tactics, how to focus on tactics. This one was on AdWords. I had a bunch more, some AdWords, some freelancing. One write-in was learning SAP and SAS. Some people just started writing me emails, what they're voting for instead of filling out the form. And I just kept on tabulating the votes. This one said they would kill for any of the courses, but they want to know the one about the agency. Another one, AdWords, freelancer, digital marketing, and this one had a write-in, the last one, making fun of my colorful language that I used in the email. This one had a bunch of different suggestions, and this one did as well. Notice that AdWords is very strong at the beginning, but did it win? Actually, it did. So I compiled all the responses. This is a simple spreadsheet, and I counted up how many people said yes for each one at the very least, and AdWords won two to one. Now notice the volume wasn't really that big right here, but most of the people wanted AdWords, and I took that as a good sign. I took that as a sign as to what I should be doing, what I should be creating. I already had $9 committed from people who took the survey, and sure enough, that's what I did. I created the clear winner. I created ppccourse.com, and it is a Google AdWords certification course, taking you from zero to AdWords master. That was the intent of creating this thing, and that's what it does. And it's still out there today, and it still is working really well. It's still an awesome course people are signing up for and using all the time. Now, I told this story in great detail to a group of educators who were looking to start their own online courses, and I think you might like this video as well. So I included a link to it at jefflytics.com slash $1. And this is a talk that I gave in Bali, basically interview roundtable format where I talked about how my origin story happened, the avatar that I designed courses for, and this whole $1 survey trick that we put out there. So check this out. I think you're going to find it very useful and interesting and insightful into how I got off the ground starting online courses. Now, if we fast forward today, we actually use a similar process at Jefflytics. Here's an example of a survey we put out last summer, just starting to understand what people were interested in. We tabulated the votes, put them all together, figuring out who we were going after and what they were interested in. And we even got responses as to what was interesting to them. A lot of them were focused on lead generation and business development and their sales process. So we ended up creating a course called Sales Jumpstart. Much of that was based on the feedback from this survey. Now in the next video and the next behind the scenes video, I'm going to show you some of our production process we went through to develop Sales Jumpstart. But as you can see here, the whole reason why we create our courses is because people want them. People tell us that they want it. And it doesn't have to just be in a survey. I put this line at the bottom of an email in early January asking people if they were interested in a course where I taught advanced analytics. And my inbox was flooded. 50 plus people asked to be on the waiting list within 24 hours for this course. And so it doesn't always have to be through a survey. Basically, I'm trying to figure out what people want, what they want from me, what they want from Jefflytics, and I'm asking them and getting responses. And then we decide if we can make these courses or not. And we'll even go as far as to pull customers in Facebook groups to understand what they're looking to do and how they're looking to do it. As you can see here, we ask what the vision is for their agency business, and then we build products to match their needs. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is a beta process because we are still working on perfecting this and operationalizing it. I can't tell you right now that we have a perfect process for delivering a survey. We're getting better at it. But 
It's not like clockwork. It's not to the point where I say, let's do a survey, and then the next day we have a survey out. We still need to do a lot of research and market testing before we can develop a product. So it's not like somebody says, I want this, and we have a product ready to go for them. We still have to do a lot of thought process into this scheduling and understanding where it fits into our overall product ladder that we have here at Jeffalytics. But I did want to share with you how we've gotten to where we are today. Now next week, I'm going to share how we develop our online course products from concept to outline to something that's online, up and running on our website. Finally, I want to know what you think about this process. Leave a comment on our YouTube channel or at jefflytics.com and I'd love to hear what you think.